Hi, welcome to this video on Telerik reporting with Visual Studio 2013 and WPF. My name is Lohit Jian. I'm a developer evangelist with Telerik. In this video, we're going to be looking at requirements. Basically, these are the things that you need at your end to follow along with this video and then get yourself up and running. Next, we're going to be looking at Visual Studio solution structure. This is one of the best practices that we employ when doing Telerik reporting. Next, we're going to look at how to create a report using Visual Studio Report Designer. Finally, we'll look at how to consume the report in a WPF application. Let's look at some of the requirements that you need in order to follow along with this video. First and foremost, you will need a relational database. I'm using Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition. You can either have an Express Edition or a full-fledged SQL Server. Anything will work. Next, next we need, I'll be using a database which is known as AdventureWorks. I've put up the link from where you can get this particular database. I'll be using AdventureWorks to uh, showcase how to uh, you know, read data from a products table and then build a report out of that. You can pretty much have any database if you want to work and uh, that you want to work and then you can follow along according to that. But I will be using AdventureWorks for all my demos. Next, we'll need the IDE. I'll be using Visual Studio 2013 Ultimate Edition. Uh, you don't need to have an Ultimate Edition because Telerik reporting is supported on all SKUs of uh, Visual Studio 2013. We also support Visual Studio 2013 Community Edition. Note that the Telerik reporting is not supported on Express Editions. Last but not least, you need the Telerik reporting software. You need to either have a trial edition of our Telerik reporting software or you can have your licensed version. You can download Telerik reporting by heading over to www.telerik.com and using the products menu you will see Telerik reporting on the right hand side here under reporting and data access. We have a demos available. This demos will point you to the online demos that we have. You can check out the pricing or you can click on the try now to download a 30 day free trial and then follow along with this video. Next, let's look at the, one of the best practices that we employ when working with Telerik reporting. It's basically the, how you structure your solution uh, when you're working with Telerik reporting. The best practice, as we say, is to store Telerik reports in a class library. Create a class library to contain your reports and then refer the class library in applications that view reports. The applications can be a WPF application or a web-based application or a Windows Forms application. What this helps you to do is to decouple your programming logic from the report and its data. Next up, let's see a demo of how to create a solution structure using Visual Studio. Here I have my Visual Studio 2013 Ultimate Edition. I have just opened up the Visual Studio IDE. I am assuming at this point of time that you already gone ahead and then installed Telerik reporting. If you see my Visual Studio, I have a Telerik menu item, then I also have the reporting, um, you know, sub item under this, uh, you know, the Telerik menu item. First and foremost, as is, uh, as we saw in the slide, we will try to create a solution. So what I'm going to do is do a file new project, and then I'm going to say I want to create. Visual Studio solution. I'm going to pick up a blank solution and then I will call this as my report solution. Of course, in your projects, you will um, have your pro solution naming according to your uh, project needs. But just to prove the point, uh, I'm going to call this solution as my report solution. Um, I'm creating a blank solution click on OK and then Visual Studio will now go ahead and create the project for me. Here we have uh, Visual Studio has created the solution. Uh, it's named as My Report Solution. Now I'm going to right click on the solution and say Add a new project. And what I'm going to do is select Visual C Sharp and then say Class Library. So I'm going to name my class library as my report lib. So basically this is 
this is the class library in which I'm going to create all my reports and then you know uh, that's why I, I've named it as my report library in your real world examples or newer projects you can pretty much um, give it a uh, name according to the context of your project so I'm going to click on OK and then now Visual Studio goes ahead and then create a uh, class library I'm going to delete this class 1.cs that's created by default yes now I'm going to create one more project. I'm going to call it as I'm going to pick up a WPF Windows Desktop. Then I'm going to pick up WPF application, and I'm going to call it as my WPF app. So Visual Studio goes ahead and then creates a WPF uh, application for me now. So what? we have done so far is to create a solution give it a name my report solution now I've created a class library called my report lib and then I created a uh, application or a WPF application and I gave it a name of my WPF app we're gonna come back to this and then see how we'll consume the report in the my WPF app next what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how to create a report Next up, let's see how to create a report. We'll create a report using the Telerik report wizard. I'm back in my Visual Studio. I have the my report lib, the class library selected. So here is where we're going to create our first report. In order to add the report, all you need to do is right click on the project, select add new item. In the new item dialog, search for reporting and you should be able to see Telerik reporting Q3 2014 blank or uh, Telerik report Q3 2014 wizard so at this point of time while recording this uh, video I I have installed Telerik report Q3 2014 so that's the latest that we have uh, as of now for this uh, demo I'm gonna be using the wizard that we have the inbuilt wizard which is gonna help me um, you know step-by-step -step instruction in creating a report so let me call this report a product list so give it a name and then click on add So what you see here is uh, our wizard kicking in. It says create a report from a wizard. I'm going to select a band report wizard. Basically, uh, band report is nothing but you know uh, it was going to lay out all the data in a column uh, manner. It's like a table. So I'm going to select band report wizard and then say OK. The first step uh, in any report uh, is to create a data source. At this point of time, since we just created the report and there's nothing in the in the in our project, we will have to create a new data source. So let me click on Add New Data Source. So these are some of the data sources that Telerik Reporting supports. You can have a data source as a CSV file. You can connect to a OLAP cube, or you can connect to an entity data source, which is nothing but your entity framework context, or even an object data source. We also have uh, data access or Telerik data access which is a free ORM from Telerik. So you can actually create a data access context and then uh, use that as a data source. For this demo I'm going to use SQL data source and then I will say the data source name is AdventureWorks data source. It's always a good practice to name your data sources because a, pro a report can have multiple data sources uh, you know, involved and then you, it's, it's always good to name the data source according to its context. So in my case, I'm connecting to an AdventureWorks database. So I'm calling this data source AdventureWorks data source. Let me click on OK. So if you had already created a report and then you're creating an, uh, another report, so you typically would choose an existing connection. But in my case, I don't have any connection because we started out from scratch. So I'm going to say specify a new connection. The data provider is a SQL data pro provider. I'm going to say build. So my instance name on this laptop is Lohit DB SRV. I'm saying use the Windows authentication. I'm going to go ahead and then say like connect to AdventureWorks, test the connection, connection succeeded. I'll say OK. So here's the connection string that it's going to put in the app.config. 
so it says do you want to save the connection string in the application config file yes I need this to be saved and then I want to name it as adventure works I click on next so this is where you start writing your queries for your product so what I'm going to do is I already have created a uh, pre-built SQL query I'm going to just cheat here and then copy and paste it so I'm going to uh, explain what I'm doing I'm basically um, using a couple of pr tables that uh, the AdventureWorks database has it has a product, product inventory, product photo, you know all those tables. So I'm using all those things to pretty much get the name, the product number, reorder point, the thumbnail photo, and quantity. So we can go next in order to see if I'm getting a data or not. I can go and then say execute query. So as you can see here, I'm bringing back name, product number, reorder point, thumbnail photo, and quantity. So this looks good. There are a thousand rows and I'm going to say finish. So we just added the data source and you can see here on the right hand side uh, the name that we gave was AdventureWorks data source. We have selected name, product number, quantity, reorder point and thumbnail photo. Let me click on next. So now what you're seeing is the wizard is asking us how, how do you want to lay out the report. So basically a report can have the header, a report can have a grouping header report can have a detail so what I want is I want the name the product number the reorder point the quantity to be shown as the details in the, in the detail section basically this is nothing but the uh, the rows that I want I'm gonna click on next now it is asking me how do you want it so if you see here step means it arranges the whole layout into columns so that they do not overlap vertically you can pretty much do an outline or a left align or I'm gonna just stick with uh, uh, stepped for now and I'm gonna you this is a uh, you know section in the wizard where we let you select the report style so Typically, we have the you know normal nothing. It's a bare textual format with Apex. We have some coloring coming in the aspect, you know, different color. Civic, uh, I kind of like this, so I'm going to select the Civic style sheet, and then I'm going to click on Finish. Once we say Finish, you can see here that our report now looks completely uh, different. So basically, this is the report designer that you see within the Visual Studio. What this particular wizard has done is, this is the report header. So if I do a, uh, this, sorry, this is the page header. If I do a mouse over on this left hand icon here, it says page header. This is the report header. This is the labels group header section. And this is the detail section. And here is the page footer section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this uh, report page header and just provide a space similarly on the report header I'm going to double click and then provide a space here and what it has done is it has neatly placed all the four columns that I selected uh, and in the header section and also in the details section now one interesting thing that you may want to uh, look at here is if you click on Telerik menu and go to reporting so you will start seeing a lot of other options in the menu items there is a report explorer if I click on that here's the report explorer that comes up so what this is doing is it pretty much lays out the whole report uh, in terms of you know like it uh, object model if you see here there's a page header page header has a report name text box title text box name caption text box you know all those things name data text box and all those things so under the hood this report is nothing but a c-sharp class file and the report explorer pretty much lays out the elements of the reports to you uh, in a tree format let me close on that and let's look at the data explorer so typically a data explorer is nothing but it shows the data source that's bound to this report remember we created the AdventureWorks data source and now this is the data source with the name product number quantity reorder thumbnail photo I can right click uh, I can pretty much select them and then drag and drop on the um, report details area next let's take a look at okay let me select the report click on Telerik reporting and then of course the group explorer report I can bring back the report wizard again to create a new report or I can upgrade a report to a newest version so now what we can do is click on save 
and notice how the designer has three paints first is a designer surface itself second one is a preview so now what it's happening is it's trying to give you as a preview without even running the application so basically first it has to build the solution so it is trying to build it now it's giving us the rep uh, report preview right inside Visual Studio and there we go it's been able to execute uh, against the data source that we gave and it's giving me the report here it says that there are 49 pages to this report and I can do a refresh it's doing the generate report again and so forth and there you go uh, I have the full control here I can do a page setup I can do a print preview if I click on print preview now we'll see the uh, same report but in a print preview format I can actually directly click on print report from here or I can directly um, export this uh, report to a PDF or a CSV or Excel rich text format, TIFF file, web archive or NXPS. So this is one advantage of using uh, Telerik reporting. You don't have to run your application. Rather, you can actually preview the, re the report uh, right here within Visual Studio uh, with just one button click. So now we have finished creating our first report. And let's take a look at our report library itself. Oh, as soon as we created file new, a new item of Telerik reporting, what the under the hood what has happened is it has already gone ahead and then added this particular um, DLL which is known as Telerik reporting that has been added uh, to your project reference and that's how we are we are seeing this particular designer and then the preview and then the HTML preview everything so under the hood the product list.cs is nothing but uh, a, a class file as I said here's the designer generated code and then here is you know the complete uh, class file uh, of course there's nothing that you see here but that is because it's everything inside this um, designer generated code uh, here is all the reports component so the text boxes the header section everything has is nothing everything is nothing but a C sharp object so basically if you see here uh, the group header section the text box everything is under our Telerik reporting namespace and here is the couple of things that we do uh, when you drag when we using the wizard when we added the uh, data source this is what it does under the hood it writes complete C sharp code for you so this is nothing but you know a class file uh, but within the Visual Studio we give you this nice looking um, uh, designer surface you don't have to jump into the code but you can uh, but you know to start out with you should always use the wizard and then just lay out your report and then you know if something that you need to do custom you can jump into the code and then start writing the code next up we'll see how to use this uh, report that we just created inside a WPF application next let's take a look at how to consume the report uh, just now we saw how to create a report so now we're going to see how to consume a report in WPF application I'm back in the Visual Studio solution we just created uh, it's my report solution and then we created the re report itself in my report library remember we had added the WPF application to this solution my WPF app and by default we have the main window.xaml so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the toolbox and if you look at the toolbox uh, you will find Telerik reporting Q3 2014 and then one of the controls that it has or the components it has is report viewer all we need to do is just drag and drop the report viewer onto the main window.xaml as you can see here the report viewer has been uh, added to the, the report viewer is added to the screen uh, so these particular XAML file what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the settings the uh, padding and all those things instead I'll just have a padding or maybe a margin set to 10 so that we know where the uh, report viewer is so what happened was under the hood when you drag and drop uh, a Telerik component from the toolbox uh, Visual Studio would have gone ahead and then created uh, added a reference to Telerik reporting and then Telerik report viewer dot WPF so that's what we see here in the references section we have reporting and report viewer dot WPF uh, added to the references section next what we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, a reference to my report lib because that's where our uh, report library or the Telerik report uh, is uh, created so I've added the my report lib now to the 
references uh, project references and as you can see here my report lib is um, referenced before we display the report uh, there are a couple of things that we would need to do first one is to add a namespace to a very specific um, I'm going to create a new sp uh, namespace here I'm going to say Telerik reporting and this will be based out of Telerik dot reporting namespace and as you can see here the IntelliSense has given me the right uh, namespace so I'm going to say this so the assembly is Telerik reporting Next, what we have to do is to add a couple of references to a uh, Telerik UI for WPF uh, assemblies. So I'm going to say add references and I'm going to go to browse. I'm going to the installation folder uh, of Telerik reporting Q3 2014. And if you g open up examples, C sharp, WPF demo, and then bin, you will see these four controls, tel uh, DLLs, telerik.windows.controls, telerik.windows.controls.input, telerik.windows.controls.navigation, then telerik.windows.data.dll. So what you would do is you can pretty much uh, add references to these. I will say OK. So now next thing that I need to do is to add the styles for um, the report viewer itself. What we have done is we have the report viewer added, uh, uh, the control being added to the project but it doesn't have any styles so far. So I can pretty much come back here, create a new folder and I will say themes and what I will do is I'll pretty much go and say add existing item and if you see here uh, in the installation folder we have WPF themes and then there are pretty much a lot of themes available here so I will pick up maybe I don't know let's say Office 2013 and just add all this um, XAML files that we have to the themes folder now you're gonna get the explicit stylings available within the project itself so let's give it a minute for the Visual Studio to go and add references. Next, what I'm going to do is I'll open up app.xaml and in the application.resources section, I'm going to paste a couple of code. I'll uh, let you know what I'm doing. So there's an extra line. Let me delete that. So basically, I said, uh, hey, I want to do a, uh, I want to merge dictionaries. So if you see here, I've added all the um, resource dictionaries here. This is the theme file that we just added, the Windows XAML, Windows Control XAML, Windows Controls Input, Navigation, and then the report report.wpf.xaml. Let me save the app.xaml. Now to actually add the reference to the report itself. Uh, let the Visual Studio save. I'm going to close app.xaml. I'm back on main window.xaml. So here what we need to do is we can actually specify the report that we need uh, to be shown here. So I will say Telerik or TR colon report viewer dot report source then Telerik reporting and then I'm going to say type report source. So notice we have different ways of uh, uh, instantiating the report. So in this case I'm going to be instantiating based on the type name. Remember during the creation of the report I, I, I said that you know the report itself is a um, plain C sharp class file. So now I'm going to tell what is the type name of that class or the fully qualified namespace of the class. So I will say the type name is my report lib. Remember this is the uh, library the class library and then the product the report name is product list and this is found inside a library or the DLL called as my report lib. Well that's all it is required to actually now show the report within the report viewer in WPF. So now I'm going to save this and then I will say uh, I will set the WPF uh, app as the startup project. I'm going to say start. So it's Visual Studio is building my project. 
let's give it a couple of seconds and we should see the WPF uh, application coming up so here is so here is the WPF uh, you know the application uh, with our report viewer in it so well we have a problem so it says hey unable to establish a connection to the database well I think I know uh, what is the problem let me stop it when we created uh, the report let's go back to the report library project when we created the report remember we had added a data source so in the application config there is a connection string that it has pretty much um, uh, set up it says my report lib dot properties dot settings dot adventure works and this is how um, you know the connection string is so what we need to do is we just have to copy this come back to the WPF application and then in the WPF application app.config all I need to do is just create this guy and save and let me build the project again and start it and Visual Studio is now building my application now any moment it should start Here we see the WPF application with the Telerik reporting WPF viewer in action. So the report viewer is able to load the report that we uh, gave it. Uh, the report is executing the query that from the data source and then able to show the data uh, on the report viewer in the report itself. We see I can do a refresh of the report. I can do the paging of the report. Uh, I can do a page setup. I can also do print preview. I can switch to the print preview uh, right here itself and I can also initiate a print dialog from here. And uh, as you can see here I can also uh, export the uh, report to various uh, export uh, options available here. Uh, PDF, CSV, Excel, Rich Text, Diff, Web uh, and XPS. So this was a quick uh, introduction to uh, you know Telerik Report Viewer along with um, um, you know Visual Studio 2013. Uh, thank you for watching this, and if you have any more questions or you need any information from our side, just write an email to lohit.nagaraj.telerik.com.